this morning. This morning I would like to continue our thoughts that I shared last week um, along the lines of hanging by a thread. There are times in our lives where we feel like we might be hanging by a thread. So I want to continue that thought in a lesson entitled Suffering Sickness and Sin. Suffering Sickness and Sin. If you turn your Bibles to James chapter 1, most of our, our text will be this morning from James chapter 1 and in verses 2 through 12. James is one of my favorite books in the Bible, because, in particularly the New Testament, because it's such a practical, straightforward book. James chapter 1, verses 2 through 12 says, Count it all joy, my brothers, when you meet trials of various kinds. For you know the great that for you know that the testing of your faith produces steadfastness. And let steadfastness have its full effect, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask God, who gives generously to all without reproach, and it will be given him. But let him ask in faith, with no doubting, for the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea that is driven and tossed by the wind. For that person must not suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. He is a double-minded man, unstable in all his ways. Let the lowly brother boast in his exaltation, and the rich in his humiliation, because like a flower of the grass, he will pass away. For the sun rises with its scorching heat and withers the grass, its flower falls and its beauty perishes, so also will the rich man fade away in the midst of his pursuits. Blessed is the man who remains steadfast under trial. For when he has stood the test, he will receive the crown of life, which God has promised to those who love him. So I want to think about this. I want us to consider the, the trials that come our way. And again, I was thinking somewhat of this. But uh, in, in thinking of that, we all face trials and tribulations. And... You know, truthfully, I suppose I'm in a better place in my life now than I have been in a long time. But it never hurts for us to study this because we might be going along just perfectly fine. And just as Job in last week's lesson, we may just have the legs cut straight out from under us. And it might be allowed to happen. Now, I want us to consider as long as there is sin, any kind of sin in the world, suffering, sickness will be here as well, and that will be in an abundance. Adam and Eve introduced sin into the world in the Garden of Eden, and from that point in time, with the introduction of sin, came death. With death came sickness. With sin, the separation of man from God, and with that separation of man from God, there came a sense of that sin. There became sorrow, pain, agony. All of it hinges on sin, not necessarily our personal sin, but sin of humanity. In Romans chapter 3, I want us to begin here and look at what Paul has to say about sin in the world. Romans chapter 3 and in verse 8, the Apostle Paul says this. He says, And why not do evil that good may come? As some people scandalously charge us with sight, their condemnation is just. Paul says in verse 9, he says, What then are Jews? Any better off? Not at all. For we have already charged that both Jews and Greeks are under sin. As it is written, none is righteous, no, not one. No one understands, no one seeks for God. They have all turned aside, 
together they have become worthless. No one does good, not even one. Now, if you will, drop down with me. I'm not going to take time to read the entire section through verse 18 this morning, but I do want to clip on verse 23 where Paul again concludes this. For all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. It is human beings. We are weak, we are frail, and we are sinful. We will sin throughout our lives from time to time. What do we do, though, when trouble comes to call? What do we do when sickness, suffering, and sin come to call in our lives? I want you to notice with me back in the book of James, James chapter 1, and in verse 2, the word when is printed there. Not if, not should, not perhaps, but when. When, James says, when you meet with trials of various kinds. This is God's way of making a guarantee. I want you to notice something that Job, during his suffering, writes in Job chapter 14. Job continues his commentary in chapter 14 and verse 1 by saying this, Man who is born of a woman is few of days and full of trouble. He comes out like a flower and withers. He flees like a shadow and continues not. Job is saying that our days, no matter who we are, no matter what status in life we may have, our days are few and filled with trouble. There are two kinds of trials, if you will, allow me to separate them as such, outward trials and inward trials. Now the outward trials are normally from outside sources, and we have little or no control over them at all. Now these trials... Uh, the, the inward trials are normally from within us. Our emotions or our feelings, the same as outward trials, again, we have very little control over them. Although I believe that we probably have a little bit more control over the inward trials than the outward trials, but still, oftentimes things happen to us not because we have done anything to deserve them or anything wrong, although that might be the case, but things happen in our lives and we have very little control over it. The outward trials are made up of, uh, again, I don't have them, hang on, my notes are missing. The outward trials are made up of things such as Hardships, grief, pain, sickness, and disappointment. The inward trials are made up of things such as uneasiness, rejection, anger, perhaps even rage, desires, or you might say lust, and rejection. These are all emotional trials. Inward trials are more emotional and feelings. The outward trials are more physical in nature. 